Roger Allen tonight on Monster State of Mind, and I'm very happy to welcome to the KGR stu KGSR studios, Ray UL. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, uh, Roger first told me about your music, mm -hmm. and the way he described it was sort of like a classical music meets Coldplay. It's like <laughs> a modern, but it's... Oh, it's like a rock guy trying to describe it. Yeah, yeah. So how, <laughs> how do you describe your music? Um, it really does have uh, a modern edge to it at this point. I've come a long way from just having classical piano be the foundation of what I freestyle with. Mm -hmm. And when I say freestyle, it's kind of like taking motifs and arpeggios and scales, storing them all away after you've memorized them thousands of times and using them whenever you want. So it's come a long way, and it, with the modern vibe, it's a lot electronic right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about merging into more of a Rick Wakeman style, oh, like yeah. a band Yes. Yes. And definitely absolutely. doing that next, but it's also adhering to things like Yanni, Vangelis. And Vangelis is actually a huge um, influence in what I'm doing right now, considering like synthesizers that he was messing with and keeping that going when it's more dubstep and the bass lines are now what I'm really playing over. Yeah, but it's got also got the classical edge to it. So Very much it's, so. It's quite a mix, as we will hear in just a bit. <laughs> Ray UL is in the studio with us, and he has a show coming up at the Riverbend Center. Let's see, that's a week from Thursday, May yes. the 16th, and we will have some free passes to give away uh, to that in just a second. But I wanted to start with a little background information. Um, did you listen to uh, classical music growing up, or uh, what were your influences? Um, well, always, my, my mind always went for the epic. <laughs> it's like, when I was 13, my, my first thing I wanted to do was write music for films. And I was a pianist at that point with a little bit of training. And I got a lot more classical training throughout the years, playing a lot of Franz Liszt, Rachmaninoff, who are very epic pianists mm -hmm. and composers. Right. So um, the the music I really listened to was film scores, mm -hmm. and that can be modern. It can be way way back when Eric Horngold was composing, all the way through to James Horner, simple melodies. And, There's and a lot of freedom, I'm guessing, in, in well within the confines of the movie in film scoring, and you've had a chance to do some scoring, have you not? I have. Um, one of the main movies I did is a Nigerian film, E.G. the movie, mm. and that's selling in Walmart right now. You know, it's mm. international. You know, not not that selling in Walmart is necessarily a <laughs> no, no, that's big time. <laughs> it, it did go big time for in, for an international film coming yeah. here to the U.S. Yeah. They've tried a lot, and it was a very emotional film, and a lot of strings and piano. And, um, after that, I did Legend of Hell's Gate. I worked with Lexi Beard on that one for a little while, and that's a lot of American. Texas music, hmm. so I was trying to score banjo. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> you're stretching the boundaries. That's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, play a song so we can kind of give our listeners an idea of what you're all about. Uh, the artist is Raul. We're going to play a song called Wellspring on 93.3 KGSR's Lone Star State of Mind. That is Rayuel on KGSR's Lone Star State of Mind. He is in the studio with us. And that was a song called Wellspring. And uh, you have a show coming up on Thursday, May 16th at mm -hmm. um, the Riverbend Center. And it's getting close to being sold out. So It is. There are 38 tickets. tickets left. So yeah. very, very close. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to envision um, you on the big stage. Um, I, and you're playing these pre-recorded beats. Mm -hmm. and, but it is still just you, but you have a guest coming on? Um, well, it's actually it's the, the latest member of my band, in a way. Um, I'll be building it as I go with virtuoso violinists and drummers. Oh, really? Um, okay. Just people who really fit, you know, yeah. you do a show with them. But the show itself, if you can imagine, it's not tracks to the least of your concerns when you're watching the show because it's all about the visuals. There will be this amazing light show right, right. Um, hosted by Element Systems. And it, it harkens back to what I was doing at Steinway Piano Gallery earlier this January, a similar show, and just it builds on that show. Mm -hmm. Everyone who came to that show will understand that it's a lot about letting yourself sit there and soak in the atmosphere of what the lighting and the music is trying to mean to you, and then these performers kind of just take it over the top. Wow, it sounds That's like really where we're going with it. The old concerto style, the original rock stars of classical music exactly. are coming forward. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it, the music totally lends itself to, you know, the light show. 
The light show is going to be customized per song, and yeah. it's really, these guys are going all out, and I'm very glad to work with them. Wow, that sounds like it's going to be a great time. So, um, I, I heard that you have played Carnegie Hall. Tell yes. me how, how you got to that point. That was great. <laughs> Well, it was it was a uh, obviously I want to talk and say it's practice, but <laughs> everyone just assumes that at this point. But at Carnegie Hall was a special occasion on the third time I played there. The first two times were uh, getting acquainted with the competition that got me there, Bradshaw and Buono International Piano Competition. Okay. Uh, it's much larger even than it was back then, and much harder to win. And it's a high school only competition. Oh, okay. So it's high school pianists against each other and it's international, so you get recordings, you don't know who you're competing with. You could be wow. competing with professional pianists whose sole dream is to play at Carnegie. Yeah. Uh, so I was very happy to play there the first time as a duo partner, where it's two pianos, mm -hmm. and then as a duet, where it's two people on one piano. And then finally, when I was 18, uh, I ended it off as me holding my own songs and they were just classical pieces that were very difficult and performing for the audience over at Wheel Recital Hall uh, in Carnegie Hall. What a thrill, though, too. I mean, that's it's that's ultimate. <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate thing will be to go back there and play my own music and yeah. my own uh, show there. Yeah. Like you said, you like to do it epic. <laughs> it, Carnegie Hall is a place for epic. <laughs> right, right. If you've ever been there. Uh, I've walked past it. That's about as close as I got. So, um, uh, and the shows at the Steinway Piano Gallery, are those still going on as well? Or? Well, I might do another one there, and Steinway Piano Gallery is amazing. They're over in Austin. The pianos they sell are amazing, and they let me, they, they sponsor me. Yeah. Um, Matt over there just really is someone who believes in what I'm doing with uh, the growth of classical music and continuing it uh, right. with modern music. Right. And they're going to probably bring another one in on f uh, the fall of this year. Mm -hmm. I'll talk with them about that. But it's mainly trying to be intimate with it whenever I go there because mm -hmm. it's a very small gallery it's they fit about a hundred people okay. and that's the scene it's not the big show like we're doing now I see all right well uh, in just a minute we want to talk about um, you've got something going on with the Red Cross and KGSR mm, does too to help the folks out in West and we're going to talk about that in just a second but um, first I'm going to play another song <laughs> hold on one sec I don't have your song queued up, so hold on one second. Well, this next song is um, <laughs> called Playful Ghost. Thank you. So I can actually talk about it for a second. Would you please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the song is uh, adhering to my virtuosic style, if you want to say it. It's not uh, something which, you know, after training, you, you try to be as fun with the piano as you can be and try to tell a story. Yeah. So this one's called Playful Ghost, and it was really made for my little sisters who they wanted a song about a ghost, kind of like Flight of the Bumblebee. Oh, how fun. So if you imagine Flight of the Bumblebee kind of had a bumblebee buzzing around and the, the music of Rimsky Korsakoff brings that out. Yeah. This one really brings out the ideas of the ghost and wait for it to get quiet near the end of the song, and he's in the house kind of scurrying around, and then it will suddenly pick up because someone else comes in and he goes and escapes up the chimney. Ah, oh, okay. And the, the whole thing captures that. All right, let's listen. <laughs> it's Playful Ghost from Ray UL, 93.3 KGSR. 93.3 KGSR's Lone Star State of Mind, and that is Ray UL and the song A Playful Ghost. <laughs> and I'm really glad you gave me the backstory on that because you <laughs> yeah. can so visualize what's going on. You know, it's scurrying around. Yeah, and, uh, it, exactly. It actually, uh, piano's really, it's, the, it's telling the story right there. Absolutely, absolutely. And we were talking off the mic about um, composition, about inspiration. Um, you know, instead of just playing with a computer, mm -hmm. play a real instrument. <laughs> yeah, and it's just taking that as one of the core um, influences of my life, having an instrument, mm -hmm. and trying to inspire other kids who are growing up making music in computers and not experiencing playing the piano or playing the violin or other compositional devices. Mm -hmm. They will never make music that's truly going to last unless they continue, continually learn an instrument along with all this production that they're learning. Yeah, like, it's I, good to know, but... It's great to know production yeah. because it's the way things are as far as quality. Right. And I always try to try, try to uh, push production on my own end, mm -hmm. but learning that instrument and being very good at it to the best of your ability allows you to compose uh, unlike anything else. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, let's talk about what you've got uh, going on with uh, the the American Red Cross. Um, you know, KGSR has been encouraging people, of course, to donate to help our neighbors in West Texas. Yes. What have you got going on? I just finished something with them, Luminaria, which was hosted by Red Cross of Texas, and it was a wonderful event by Live by Design. And um, Influential Magazine was uh, also there, I believe. But they made this event that really honored everything the Red Cross of Texas has done over the past year. And Red Cross actually hired me to uh, score a three-minute anthem for this. So it was a really special thing for me because you see all these photos of the hurricanes or uh, it wasn't West back then, that hadn't happened. Right. Um, but it was really something that inspired me to write a very emotional piece that hopefully will be used again. I've allowed them to use it whenever at any of their conventions. Okay. And I would really like to stay involved and try to figure out a way um, of helping with West. But that's a great way for you to contribute to the American Red Cross is you know, do donating your time and your composing skills and it, your talents. Just, <laughs> Music is always the emotional side of yeah. charities, Absolutely. and charities can say things and show photos and everything, but when you bring in music and performers who also care deeply about the cause, yeah. it, it, it hits that next level where people don't forget it. So, so true. Yeah. So true. Well, I tell you what, let's give away um, some tickets to your show, All right. which is coming up at um, the Riverbend Center on uh, Thursday, May 16th. If you would like to go, you can... Call us right, right now, 390-5477, 390-5477, uh, win tickets to see Ray UL. And by the way, spell your name so people can uh, Google you. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's just one name, R-E-U-E-L, and the website would be R-E-U-E-L-music.com. And that is a lot more information, but hopefully it comes up in Google as number one or two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's been really great meeting you. Thank you Thank so you, much you for sharing your evening with us. And we're going to play one last song from Ray UL. This is Artistica Gallery, 93.3 KGSR. Ah, uh, baby! Let me pick up the phone. Hey, you won the tickets. Yeah, what's your name? <laughs> she says she loves the music. Oh, yeah. right. Yay. I'm sorry, what's, what's your name again? <laughs> okay. A lot of people listening are like, this is not KGSR. Okay, what's a phone number for you? <laughs> uh -huh. I'm whisper in the camera. Oh, I do it. Great, we'll just come by the radio station. <laughs> They're uh, not hard to see. and 5 30, <laughs> Monday through Friday, and we'll have your tickets waiting at the front desk. And uh, bring your ID. And um, they'll, uh, again, the show is on uh, May the 16th. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, KGSR. Hi. Uh, you won the tickets. <laughs> All, right. All right, what's your name? And spell your last name? Everyone really wants to come. It should probably be like... S-H-I-R-E-Y? All right, we'll just come by the radio station during business hours. That's 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. And we'll have your tickets at the front desk. Alright, thank you. We could easily right, like, give them all away. Oh, you got a few new fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>